You know, we keep our eyes open for interesting stories of all kinds on all kinds of platforms around the Northwest. And we found a report out of Alaska that we think really is worth your time. The story is from the Associated Press. The headline shows us where it's going. Anchorage homeless face cold and bears. A plan to offer a one-way airfare out reveals a bigger crisis. Okay, we could not turn away from that one. The mayor of Anchorage, Alaska, Dave Bronson, suggested the city buy one-way plane tickets for homeless people who wanted to go somewhere warmer than Alaska. Although he said he'd also fly folks to other locations outside of Alaska if that's what they wanted. He's quoted in the AP story saying when people approach us and want to go someplace warm or they want to go to some town where they have family or friends that can take care of them. If they choose to go there, we'll support that. Now, before you decide the mayor is shooting from the hip with wild ideas, which I have to admit kind of went through my mind. Here's some context. Anchorage has about 3,000 homeless folks, according to the AP, but only 614 shelter beds. During COVID, the city turned its arena into an additional shelter for 500 more people. But after complaints about violence, drug use, trespassing and litter, it was turned back into an arena for hockey and concerts this past spring. So that's gone. According to the report, two years ago, the mayor suggested building a shelter and navigation center on the east side of Anchorage. But the city council whittled down his plan and the capacity eventually was only 150 beds when really hundreds more are needed. So that's a problem, especially since it's really cold in Alaska during the winters. Last year, eight people died there from exposure in Anchorage. That's a record. The mayor said he had no choice but to suggest a ticket out of town. I have a moral imperative here, and that's to save lives. And if that means giving them a few hundred dollars for an airline ticket to go where they want to go, I'm going to do that, he said. Well, OK, except that lots of people seem to just hate that idea. One of the groups is the American Civil Liberties Union of Alaska. They issued a statement about the idea that reads, it is past time for state and local leaders to address the underlying causes of homelessness. Airplane tickets are a distraction not a solution. And the chair of the Anchorage City Council said the reality is there's no place to send these people because this is their land. Any policy that we make has to pay credence to that simple fact. And he added, and so we cannot be supporting policies that would take people and displace them from their home, even if their home is not what you or I would call home. Now, in case you're interested, yes, there does seem to be kind of a feud going on between the city council, which is liberal leaning and the mayor who's Republican. So that's adding to all this. In the meantime, the mayor's plan is not funded and it may not really even happen at this point. It's just words. But the idea of putting homeless folks on a bus or plane to somewhere else has been around for decades. And some places have been pretty open about it. Back in 2013, we at KGW here did a story about San Diego and San Francisco giving homeless folks one-way bus tickets to Portland. That same report showed that since 2002, St. Petersburg, Florida had put 13 people on buses to Portland. In all those cases, people were supposedly coming here to live with a relative or someone who would help them. And I hope they did find shelter. While we're looking into the past, we probably also should remember the city of Portland has done that very thing, giving people a one way ticket to ride out of town. For some context, let's take a look at this 2017 story from investigative reporter Kyle Boshi. We first met Dylan Hendershot in May of 2016. He'd been living on the streets of downtown Portland when he received an $82 bus ticket out of town. And you are taking a bus today from Portland to where? Spokane, Washington. Hendershot hoped to reunite with family, which he did briefly. But almost a year later, the 19-year-old tells KGW he's still homeless, bouncing from one friend's place to the next. And he's not the only one. And it's a natural progression. KGW's investigative team looked at all 275 tickets purchased under Portland's Ticket Home Program. Of those receiving tickets, roughly half, 49 percent, reported they were in stable housing three months after arriving in a new town. The other half were either still homeless or unaccounted for. Some who just can't get a hold of that person to get an answer one way or the other. The city and county budgeted $200,000 for the first year of the program, which paid for bus, train and airplane tickets, sending homeless Portlanders across the country. They ended up in cities big and small, from New Hampshire to California, 
One person even got a bus ticket to the Dalles. We have uh, an influx of people that seem to be coming out of Portland. We're Mayor Stephen Lawrence them. says the homeless population in the Dalles is growing. Resources are stretched thin. And Portland's Ticket Home program isn't helping. In theory, it's probably uh, something that could work. But in actuality, I don't think it's being done right. I think, you know, if someone can say to them, I have a contact, here's a ticket, boom and whether they do or not. I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, you're not welcome at our shelter, and here's a bus ticket, get out of here. That's not happening. Dennis Theralt, spokesperson for Multnomah County's Joint Office of Homeless Services, says calls are made to verify someone has a place to live before they're given a ticket, and there's a follow-up phone call three months after they arrive. We're helping people who need a little bit of a boost to get back to somewhere else. Um, they're here, they're stuck here, um, they have help waiting for them, people who will take care of them, and we're able to connect them to those people. Looking back, Dylan Hendershot says he appreciates that bus ticket. In Spokane, he's got a support network of friends and family that he didn't have in Portland. It may not be the perfect solution, he said, but it helped. He's no longer sleeping in a tent in downtown Portland. Again, that was a report from 2017, pretty much what the Anchorage mayor is now talking about. Now, I know many of you wonder about how many homeless in our area actually grew up here. A New York Times article over the weekend on the homeless problems that we're experiencing referred to government data showing that Portland is attractive to homeless folks from many different places. They linked to the 2019 point in time report of homelessness. We looked at the most recent report that was completed. That's for 2022. This table shows that of all the people counted who were unsheltered in emergency or transitional housing, 20% said they were originally from Multnomah County. 3% had no answer, which leaves 77% from somewhere else. Of those, 53% said they'd been here more than two years. One more graph here. This is from that same point in time count of all the people they talked with who were homeless when they came to our area. Roughly 38% said they're from Clark and Clackamas or Washington County or somewhere outside the metro area in Oregon. Nearly 57% said they were from Washington, California or somewhere else in America. And for 3%, the birth location was unknown. Okay, I know that's a lot of information. And even the researchers admit that these point in time counts are kind of just a glimpse of the full picture. You don't get the whole thing. But the bottom line to the story is the city of Anchorage is struggling with their homeless population. And the mayor wants to give them a ticket to ride. So what are your thoughts about that plan? Is it a good solution to reunite folks with family or friends who can help them? Or is that just a smokescreen to get those people out of the city and let someone else deal with them? Send us your thoughts, will you? Let us know what you think. We're always fascinated to get input from you. And whether you're watching live or later online, I want to hear from you. Our email address is thestory at kgw.com, or you can call and leave a voicemail. The phone number is 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.